So welcome to another unboxing video from the playersaid.com. My name is Alexander, and today we are taking a look at Axis Empires Ultimate Edition from Decision Games. This might be one of the biggest war games we've ever had on the channel. Um, so Axis Empires has been around for a few years, uh, but they combined basically absolutely everything for this game into this giant um, behemoth of a box. It, it's crazy. So this is a, 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 basically it's a two to, they say six player, but I think a lot of people are gonna play this at four player if you're gonna do the whole hog. Um, but, but you can do lots of different player accounts at this game, but it, it can handle up to six, but I think two to four is probably the most likely player accounts we're gonna get out of it. Um, this is a massive strategic World War II game that you can scale up and down to as big or as little, within reason, <laughs> as, as you want it to be. So, again, Axis Empire has been around for a long time. This includes Totala Krieg, which is the Western or the European theater, uh, the Dicenso, which is the Pacific theater. This also has the uh, air, special air naval module rules, which is like the Schiffskrieg rules, I believe. And then it also has in it uh, the Dice of Decision 2 module, which is, um, it's, a, it's like a module system for totally creating your own campaign and sandboxing it. Um, if that's the way that you want it to go. Um, but, I, gosh, this, this game weighs an absolute ton. Uh, it, this might, I think this might be one of the biggest, like... Like, this box is the size of something like where there is Discord, but there's so much more in it. Anyway, uh, we're gonna flip it over <laughs> and, and kind of dive on in. Uh, and I will say, shout out to Ardwolf. If you've not watched Ardwolf's Lair, um, he's kind of the reason that we were turned on to this. Like, I, I'd heard about it, and it was something that was like, I'm never going to do this, but watching him talk about it and what it can be, and then hearing some other people who had not played it before kind of dive on into it and see how good it was, I'm like, okay, we, we got to pull the trigger on this. That, that's reality. we got to do it. So here we are. Um, I have opened some of this stuff. Uh, so normally when you when you get the game, these are all kind of shrink wrapped in a packet of two and three, but I kind of wanted to nose through the rules a little bit. So I was kind of understood what was in here. So again, we're gonna use the term big and size a lot. You know, if this, this is a monster game. If you're not into monster games, you're probably not gonna buy this, but it doesn't mean that you won't have fun looking at what's in the box. So. Here we have the core rules. These are printed on fully matte paper. You can see how glossy uh, the reflection is on the light. You just don't get that with these rules. I actually kind of like that. But if you've played any decision games, it looks very familiar from a decision game standpoint. However, um, unlike some of the other games that you might find uh, from that company, apparently these are extremely good, well-written, and kind of well done rules, especially for a game this big. You would, I've heard that the development on this is, you know, really first class, second to none, um, especially considering what, you know, some of the games that get put out these days, it's like, how much playtesting's gone through this? Well, this has gone through a number of different revisions and versions, uh, and apparently this is really good. Now, all that being said, <laughs> you still have uh, 50, five, close to 60 pages of rules. Some of them are optional here at the very end, but like this is not a, a game, a rule book for the faint of heart. But that being said, these are the core rules. There's all these additional Schiffskrieg Air Naval rules, which you could use, but if you don't want to, um, and I think especially that's important, uh, like in the West, in, on the European theater, you know, you don't have to use all of the special, special Schiffskrieg rules where it's a lot of the naval combats and, and real detailed naval war. You can just use the regular rules. So these are the two game-specific rules. So you're gonna read the 60 pages of core rules. Then you get to the game-specific rules. However, um, yeah, you've got some additional rules and stuff, some little lookups, you know, different bits and pieces that are unique to that particular theater. 
with some different events and you know you, you'll have stuff for um the normandy landings but the reality is, is yeah that's it's another 20 pages of rules but they're all small little bits and then the rest of this is scenarios from very very small training scenarios to mid-sized campaigns to like the whole hog and then there's some notes and designer and history stuff at the end of it so sure this is another 55 page manual but you know two-thirds of that is um scenarios so d d i'm not saying it's not a lot but it it's not as bad as it feels when you pick up literally a hundred pages of rules. <laughs> uh, Dicenso, which is Pacific Theater, very, very similar. Also, I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it looks like it's this faux Sherman hull with like a, a Stuart style turret on it. Uh, like that doesn't, but that's not what a Stuart hull looks like. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but that looks like a not real tank. Anyway, uh, I do actually pretty like the style of the artwork though, and that it's consistent across the maps. Again, here for the Dicenso rules, we've got all of our special rules. And let's see, we had 22 pages in Total Creek. Yep, and we have 21 pages in this. So very similar. And then we get into all the different scenarios and the player and designer notes at the end. Very, very similar. Then we have this Dice of Decision module rules, and this is 60 pages of build your own campaign, and it can be basically like whatever you want to it. This is interesting. Will I ever realistically use this? I don't know. Probably not. But that doesn't mean that this isn't really cool, and there won't be a lot of people that do use this. But, you know, it, it turns this game into whatever you want it to be, is my understanding of that, which I think is pretty neat that they have that kind of option. Uh, next up, we have the quite a lot of um, counters. I think there's over 2,000 counters in this game. Uh, we have a ton of play cards, which is also something that we'll go through. And there is a lot of decks of cards here. So we're going to get at the decks of cards. We have, uh, sure, a bag of bags, but the reality is, is we're going to do probably counter trays or some other thing. We have a lot of these small little overlays, uh, which I think are for doing stuff with DOD and optional rules and, you know, overlaying things. Oh, if it was a slightly different situation, I believe. And we have uh, three D6. And then we do have a shipping insert here, which we will probably toss. But then we also have the four map sheets. And uh, for reference in this one, the map sheets, not dissimilar from Imperium Romanum, are only folded twice. So they're this larger footprint. Normally a lot of other war games are folded one more time. These are not. I think that helps it to lay a bit flatter uh, when, you're, when you're laying them out. We'll take a look at those here in just a second. Uh, so let's take a gander at these play cards. There is a lot of play aids and a lot of like sled style um, play cards. This was something I was a little bit worried about because I'm like, oh gosh, I've got four maps and then I need another four maps worth of space just for these. But apparently it's not that bad, um, especially if you're doing just a, a two mapper. So, cause it's got like, here's a components list and uh, some symbology and stuff. You're not gonna, like that's going in the box, right? We're not gonna be using that in the same way. Uh, we have our support unit and convoy marker aid. We're gonna use this only as a reference if and when we come across those things and we're gonna memorize some of that. So I don't think that one's too bad either. Uh, we have our deck building chart. We're gonna have built our decks and then that's going off. Uh, to the side we have more of these more of these little deck building charts those aren't things that we can have out on the table all the time uh, i believe this is our um dod game creation charts dice of decision again we're not playing the dod so we're going to put those away uh so let's same thing here with these kind of chapter outcomes and lists as you go through different campaigns. I don't think we're going to use that stuff. Uh, and we have our, we have some f setup charts for Dicenso, Totala Krieg. 
So that's something that we probably would use. But again, setup can't, you set it up and then you move on from it. Uh, area tables and map overlay references. So I think these are different overlays again from different things that you can choose to start with. And they're literally just like small little cutouts for maps if and when you choose to play with those in Dice of Decision, I believe. So now we're starting to get to like actual play aid stuff. So again, we have, this is a Dicenso action, ax axis faction card. And it has all the different charts, tables, sequences of play. And then inside we have the shift screen charts and tables, which if you're not playing with the shift screen module, we don't need those. So we just have this for the Japanese player in Dicenso, great. So that's like real one play aid. In Dicenso, we have the Soviet faction play aid card. Again, it's all the same type of stuff. And then the Schiffskrieg stuff, which we won't be using. At least like, if you think about it that way when you're learning the game. So if you're playing Dicenso, you've got a bifold play card each. Here's the Western faction's bifold play card for Dicenso. And again, inside we have the Schiffskrieg stuff. If you're choosing to use that, which I don't know if I would recommend the first time around. So you've got a one kind of handheld play card each, and then we have our Dicenso kind of sleds. So we have Soviets, we have um, Axis forces, and then we have Western allies. So these are gonna be, we got two maps, and then we got this series of little sleds out on the board for holding units, and there's a little reference to events and things like that. These are single-sided, these are supposed to go on the map. So two maps and three play cards, Again, your play aids are gonna be kind of handheld or kind of off to the side. And then we have kind of these off-map displays for um, European war display, and then st a strategic hex tracker, which, you know, how many of these have you captured and where you're at kind of victory condition-wise. But again, a lot of empty space, we can overlay this. So I've got four or five different sleds that are going on the board, and that's pretty much it for Dicenso. Then we go to the Totalakrieg side of that, and again, we have a bifold for each of the different factions here. And inside each of those is the Schiffskrieg rules for, um, I don't know if these are the same as the Dicenso ones, but they, they probably are, but if not, they'll be unique to the kind of Battle of the Atlantic style uh, that might have some different stuff to it. But again, a bifold for, for the players. And then we have our kind of on map sleds, holding boxes, what have you. We've got Western allies, Axis forces, Soviets. Again, we've got our, um, uh, oh, that's interesting. So, and then we have our strategic hex tracker, similar to the one in Dicenso. And then we have here our scenario display, fire in the east, uh, which I don't exactly and the Great Crusade. Uh, it looks like this is just for Totala Krieg. There wasn't something like that for Dicenso, which I think is interesting. Uh, and then if we're doing our Shifts Krieg module, we have our fleet displays and then our battle board for doing um, naval engagements, which I think is pretty neat. So yeah. A lot of play cards. Oh, ship building track. Come on, man. That's, that's great. And it goes up to 1947. Yeah, how and when you start this game, I think is also very, very, very interesting. Because my understanding is that there's, you, do, you can play lots of like pre-rules all the way back to 1914, where it's more like a setting the stage and it's not like the full, it's not like the whole game, but you can go all the way back there to carve up Europe and the wider world, and then you play this stuff. I think that's part of Dice of Decision, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, next up, we have the kind of crazy amount of counters, and this is also something that seemed quite scary on the box, because I think it's 20, it's either 2100 or 2400 counters. Oh, it's on the other box, I don't, I don't have it. Let's see, the box says, 2,380 counters. That is an insane amount of counters, but remember, it's, think about the game as two two-mappers. It's a thousand counters for a two-mapper. That's not, 
that's not the end of the world. Anyway. Uh, okay, and how are these divided up? Okay, they've actually got some lists on here. So the, we have Dicenso, we've got, here's all the Soviet forces, and then we have uh, lots of different miners down here as well. So I think we've got India, Indochina probably, Burma, these are French counters, I don't know what that is, H-O. I mean, is this Tibet even? I mean, this is so detailed. Australia, Bangkok, Siam, Philippines, uh, NEI, which is Dutch East Indies, I believe. That's DEI, but is that Netherlands East Indies? I'm not sure. But, like, the level of detail, come on, man. Oh, it even says in the back. Yeah, yeah, Netherlands East Indies. It's interesting that they don't call it the Dutch East Indies. I wonder if that's a modern anachronism, or if that's what it was called and we just call it DEI. Here we have our Commonwealth forces, or our British forces, I guess, because they've got India and Australia differently. We have our US-based forces here as well. It even says Britain, you idiot. <laughs> and here we've got our Russian forces. Nationalist China, Communist China, so we're going to have that conflict going on as well, which I think is really interesting. And a few different markers down here. So, let's see. And that, I'm, I'm level with you, that's the counters for Dicenso. And this is what I'm talking about, is like, 2,400 counters seems like a lot. This is the counters for a two map of Pacific game. That is entirely reasonable. I'm gonna be honest with you, that's entirely reasonable. It's not a crazy, um, it's a low counter density game. I've seen pictures of it in the stacks of two or three at most, and the threes has markers basically. Um, for Totala Krieg, we have three counter sheets. We have lots and lots of Axis forces here for, for Germans. We got French forces and then some markers down here as well. And I do, I actually really like the clarity of these markers as well. And they are most of them all dual sided as well with the step losses. Then we have um, allied forces. We've got Britain, we've got United States, and then we have the Soviets as well. Do they call them Russia? They call them Russia. And then we have uh, Total Agree, we have all the miners. And all the miners, so we've got, okay, that's interesting. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Uh, so we've got a couple different markers and stuff, but we've got all these different miners, and we've, like, we've got, is that, uh, so we've got Poland, Ukraine, Turkey, Switzerland, Romania, uh, Greece, Egypt, Finland, at the time, Czechoslovakia, I mean, B, but B, Y, oh, it's Belarus. So they've got, and they've got Don here. Am I being an idiot? What was, where did I see those? I just think this is some Don. Donbass region, which is east of Ukraine. I don't know, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speak to what, because a lot of these were like satellite nations, but I don't know how official, they were as individual nations, or if they were just regions, um, and kind of vassals of R Russia and a Soviet state at the time. Uh, but I even the Italians here, so all of these are Totala Krieg miners, basically. Then we get into the Schiffskrieg stuff, which spreads across a couple other counter sheets. So again, if, if, if you're just playing Totala Krieg, you got two and a bit counter sheets. Uh, that's not unreasonable for a two mapper. So if you're playing Shifts Creek, look at all these air and naval units that, we're, that we've got here that we're kind of adding in. Those are all the Russian ones. Then we have the Japanese air naval units. Then we have the British air naval units, German air naval units, France, Italy, um, not really any miners. I think we've got Greece and someone else maybe? And then the last of the Shifts Creek stuff is these ones with all the US ones, basically. Uh, a couple of Swedes, a couple of Spaniards, and a couple of Turkish ones as well. Then we get to the Dice of Decision uh, counters, which is, again, all those kind of what-ifs. 
So we have all of these markers down here, and then all of these units and markers over here as well. Uh, so like, you know, the, the Italians can be an Entente member, which I think is really cool. Communist Britain, come on. Uh, communist Germany, so like, the dice of decision is where the real sandbox lies, where you can really set up and do whatever you want, which I just think is really neat. Communist France, what do we got here for? Tsarist Russia, instead of them being communists in World War II. I mean, all of those different things that you can do, and then the last we have these, uh, this is the last of the uh, dice of decision. Communist Austro Austria Hungary. And this is what I talk about. You can go back real early, back to 1914, figure out what happens and set it up as like, okay, if World War I had happened differently and everything was different for those next 20 or 30 years, what does that look like going into 1940? Uh, well, the 40s, I guess, 38, 39. I just think there's so much opportunity, but don't be scared off when you see like, oh, it's like nine counter sheets and 2,400 counters. If you're doing it just, the Europe, it's two counter sheets. It's really not as bad as all that. So please, I, I was very happily surprised at how um, undaunting that was, if that makes any sense. Okay, we are now going to look at the maps, which are beautiful, by the way. And I'm really glad that they didn't kind of cheap out on these. Ugh. So here we have, for Dicenso, this is the eastern... Nope, this is the western map. It's called the Asia map, but there's two maps for uh, Dicenso. So we have this massive turn track with all sorts of information on it, and it is a hex encounter game uh, where we've got the Indian subcontinent all the way through Tibet and through China, Mongolia, up to kind of bits and pieces of Russia, all sorts of charts and tables, and then we've got down here Australia, uh, and then we've got the Philippines and the larger Dutch East Indies. But to me, this is all very crisp and very clear uh, and really well done and I, I like the color palette on it. And then here we have the kind of Eastern Pacific. Um, so here we've got the Japanese home islands and then we have this kind of larger um, hashed area which is the Allied Danger Zone is my understanding. I think it's um, I don't exactly know how that works, but I think you, you can't just bum rush those areas. You gotta be much more careful and strategic and set yourself up to be able to work within those. Or there might be penalties to doing that, but it's two maps, right? It's gonna take up a good chunk of space. You've got, I think it was kind of three faction sleds and then two other sleds as well. So you do need a bit of space for this one, um, but that's, that's what you're looking at. Again, you've got developing these naval zones Everything's pretty crisp and clear, and then they've got lots of these helpful terrain effects charts and, and aids all over the map. So those are the Dicenso maps. Can I eat? And I did that that way because I felt like I couldn't fit them on the camera, but it actually turns out that I can. So let's do it this way. It looks great. It, it really does. Yeah, it really kind of doesn't fit on here, but you get the idea. That's what we're looking at. And so let's take a look at the... Totala Krieg maps, and it really is just like two concurrent games. I don't know if you play both at the same time what the overlap looks like. Um, I just haven't read those parts of the rules yet, so I'm very interested to see what a full game of this looks like, if it's just two concurrent games and you kind of total the scores, or what the interplay between the two really looks like. Uh, so again, we've got our massive turn track. Uh, we've got our delayed DRMs for incoming units and production. And then over here, uh, here we go, we got Eastern Europe. Uh, let's lay these over. And, uh, okay, up here we have these displays. I'm, I'm gonna fold this down for a second. So we have these displays for like our posture, who's at war with who, basically, which you love. A VP track, seeded lands, obviously for those kind of more minor areas. Well, not minor, but you know what I mean, the, the kind of satellite areas that get thrown to the Soviet wolves earlier in the game. But yeah, it's, a, it's very uh, reminiscent of the size and scope and scale of something like Unconditional Surrender. And based on my understanding of the rules, it, it's not a dissimilar experience, 
a bit more detailed, I think. Uh, but I love that game because it's low counter density and it's playable, but the, scale, the scope and scale is wonderful. And my understanding is that this is similar in the scope and scale, and it, I'm hoping that it provides those same things. Uh, because this is just wonderful to look at, to have out on the table, and it's, I don't know, it's a big monster game, but I think it can be playable. I think it can be really, really playable. You know, the the full both games with everything in it, 100 hours, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but playing just one of these two mappers, playing a good chunk of a campaign on it, I think it's going to be doable, and not crazy... Um, with you know the potential rules overheads and, and madness that can go on with the if you did everything in one everything in one would be amazing that's further down the line for us that's all i'm saying so thank you for sticking with me for this immensely long um uh unboxing we didn't even really look at the cards but the cards are things like our fortunes of war uh, where it's going to kind of go through different effects that happen when you play them and what and and it's these drive a lot of the things like, hey, we can get some steps and stuff. The cards are an important part of the game, but it's a lot of just different events. I do love the backs of the cards, and there's a ton of them. Some of them are for Total Greek, some of them are for Dicenso, and you're going to play those uh, respectively. But it's very much like, hey, in the politics segment, if you're having one, you're going to roll on the crises tables. You're going to get different events going on. There's a ton of these cards. Um, but don't be afraid of this game. If, if you're on a fence, find someone who's got it or, you know, don't be a coward and get it yourself. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm very excited to play this. We are going to play this this year. I'm going to make it happen. Um, even if it's just, you know, one of the two kind of games within it. But it just looks incredible. Um, there will be more from this game on the channel coming up, but appreciate you sticking around and, and shooting in. I've been Alexander for theplayersaid.com.